Hello Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 3 bringing you an exhibition match stream. And today we're going to be featuring a lot of middle range players. Mostly Rymark actually, that's most of the replays for today. So yeah, as should be obvious, the devs fixed the replay system! Which, okay, it's a weird statement. The devs, but yes, the replay system has been fixed. So I'm now able to give you replays again! Starting off we're going to have Corvus Cortex versus Rymark on Ravaged, which as I'm sure Anyone who's watched my show for any length of time knows this is one of my favorite maps. So I have Corvus Corvus starting out in the southwest going for a Cloaky Bot Factory, while Rymark in the northwest, sorry, northeast going for the Shield Bot Factory once he gets to it, starting out with Metal Extractors. Confident in the size of the map apparently, they doesn't have to worry too much about getting the factory up quickly. And going for a couple bandits for quick and easy scouting, while Corvus Corax on the other hand goes for immediate Jethro. Oh, immediate Gremlin! Okay, he is worried that Rymark is going for anti air before going for Glaive himself for the purposes of scouting, but in case Rymark goes for air, he's got anti-air prepared. Sort of. Just in case. But you know what, on this map that is not an unsafe assumption. Oftentimes players will go for air. So yeah, for anyone who hasn't seen this map before, or hasn't ever played StarCraft 2, because it's actually a pretty much a remake of a map in StarCraft 2, is no longer caverns, I believe. This is northeast, southwest start, kind of a natural expansion over here to the south, and then further along the East side here, the center has a couple clusters, and it is mirrored rotationally. And it's also in this nice geo spot here and here, in the, north, in the southeast and in the south center, with another cluster in the center east. Anyway, back to the game itself, we have Corvus Corax getting his gremlin into Rymark's periphery. Rymark is not aware of what Corvus Corax is doing, he doesn't know that the gremlin is here, but he does know that they, there are some units being sent around. Corvus Corax does have enough knowledge. He knows there's something. Not got line of sight. But he does know that there are a couple raiders around his borders, just there to make sure. Well, on the other hand, Corvus Corax has no radar, but he does have a pretty decent set of line of sight. He knows about some of the defenses, but he doesn't know what Rymark's factory is. No idea really about the logistics either way. Neither player too aware of what the other is doing. Not yet anyway, but soon that will change. Rymark is moving out with a convict and a few bandits, and the Glaives will probably meet up with that fairly shortly. Corvus Corax is not pulling back. He is actually, I don't think, paying attention to this. He is now paying attention to this. His cursor just come up here in time to pay attention, and now the players know what they are up against. And Corvus Corax chooses to retreat, or at least chooses to regroup. Looks like he's trying to lure Rymark into a choke point for surrounding him, getting the bandits. Actually, very nice surround on those bandits, managing to take out one for pretty much free. Another one also takes takes out all the bandits, actually, and Rymark's commander isn't helping out quite yet, and the fight finally getting in there, but all the bandits do go down, and one of the glaives will retreat successfully, managing to get out of there. That was a very good fight by Corvus Gorax. And if the name isn't familiar, familiar, he's also known as Drunken Master. I guess just renamed recently. I don't believe I have casted a game with him yet, but I might have, under the name Drunken Master. So if that's the case, that is who it is. Anyway, Tick haven't been produced, and Corvus Gorax actually switching over to a mix of Warrior and, ban and Glaive. Mostly Warrior, I mean sorry, mostly Glaive. Five Glaives, only one Warrior so far. Does have a tick as well. He probably should move that closer to this choke point. Where it is right now, I'm not sure I really agree with that placement. Closer to the choke point would be easier to just hit things that are coming through, though. Honestly, I don't think that a lot is going to be coming through. Romerick seems to be playing more defensive. He's going... He's going for a decent amount of Thugs, Rogues, and some Bandits, but I'm seeing a bit more of a Turtle Heavy play. Does have several defenders up and lotuses. He's got pretty strong defense perimeter right now, and it looks like he is trying to continue along with that. Commander has been upgraded, although with no modules, just upgraded for the extra build power. And another lotus being built up. So Rymark definitely going for heavy defense, while Corvus Corax going for much heavier on off. Actually, does Corvus Corax? Ha Corvus Corax has no defense whatsoever. He has absolutely no static defense. He has his commander up. His commander has been upgraded to Beam Laser Nano Lathe. And it's actually being upgraded again. And right now Corvus Corax is about 5 metal ahead of Rymark. And just lost a Glaive to the commander. It looks like that tick will actually be coming up very shortly as a few bandits and a thug come out to try to deal with this warrior and Glaive. And actually that might have been the perfect position for the tick. If more the fact that the tick did not go off, that would have been the perfect time to put it off. But it did not. The bandits spotted it and knocked it away. And now, Rymark, he's actually got a pretty good position to push forward. He's not taking it, but he could. These bandits could overwhelm the warrior without too much issue. 
A couple of them would die, although retreating is not the best option in this case. And with the Thug and Rogue support, that warrior is down. But Rock was coming in as well. Corvus Corax having actually switched a bit to Rocker production and then stopped producing. He was not paying attention. Apparently forgetting to use the infinite build. While Rymark continuing to get more just thugs, rogues, bandits, and tearing apart Corvus Corax's army. There are some rockers in the back that are helping out, but this warrior has to retreat, can't stay in the fight, and the rogues coming up against the Rockos are actually going to have a bit of a disadvantage thanks to the arcing fire. But then again, at this point, Rymark has a larger army. Well, there's a larger army up front. Corvus Corax does have more units coming around the back, and he does have more units set up for raiding once Rymark is out of this area, once his commander is, I should say. But I think Corvus Corax is a bit more focused on this one choke point, which is getting... Okay, at this point, Rymark is breaking out, and this is going to work out very well for him. He pushes forward. The bandits will take care of the rock. no problem. Even the thugs are helping out a bit. Corvus Corax has to retreat. There's not much coming in to help defend against this. So right now, Corvus Corax has basically nothing going for him in the offensive department. What he does have is a lot of economy. He has the entire map. He has about one and a half times the economy of Rymark's. He has a jump at Jet Factory coming up as well, which should be interesting. We have seen it work decently well with Randy against both, well, against Google Frog. Against Cuba, it didn't work out so well, but that was, well, it's because of Rogues. And the thing is, Rymark's going for a decently heavy amount of Rogues, which is going to be an issue for Pyros, though if he goes for Jax or Moderators, that actually could have an effect. However, the Rogues are being destroyed. The Thugs are helping out as much as they can, but with, that's not very much against a bunch of Raiders, though still the army goes down. Corvus Corax continues to build up. He has 30 metal being pushed into this factory and still floating. This jump jet plant not being built up, surprisingly enough. And the commander over in the southeast side of the map, having built up more and more of these metal extractors, not gotten the geothermal plants, though, surprisingly enough. Given the economy he has, I would expect he'd go for geothermal. Now, finally getting the jump jet plant back up and running. Though it's going to take a couple minutes. Should only take about a minute or less if he's really pushing for it. So he's not obviously focusing very much on that jump jet factory. Focused more on pushing out more glaives and more Rockos. However, the shield ball has broken through those lines, and it's coming around to get the commander flanking it in, or maybe not quite flanking it in, but if it goes down this bottom ramp, it will flank it in. However, the commander choosing to fight instead, building up a Stardust, but it won't be too late. That Stardust is going to go down to the thugs, despite the, well, okay, despite the 24 build power. That Stardust just barely gets up, but then is knocked down once again. Corvus Corvus needs to get out of there, but has no real way to fight, and the thugs tearing it apart. The Glaive's coming in right after, and even with that, even with the Glaive's support, these thugs, sheer numbers of them, I think it's going to be enough to actually tear apart this base. The thugs are getting rid of that whole base, and Bandit's coming for support with the Glaive's. The Glaive's going to be able to do a bit of damage, but I think they'll be get, able to get rid of a thug. They have gotten rid of a rogue so far, and probably be able to get rid of a thug, but at the same time, this entire base has been destroyed. The commander has managed to retreat. The bottom ramp was not secured, so a full flank wasn't possible. But at this point, Corvus Corax's commander is in a very tight spot and actually has stopped moving and is going to die as a result of not moving. That was a deadly pause. But there it goes. Corvus Corax loses his commander, and with that, the east side of the map, which Rymark is very quickly going to take. He has his own convicts there, tearing apart the economy setup that's there, and also starting to tear apart the south. Having no defenses, Corvus Corax is pretty easily knocked down from here, other than the Stardust that he's built up. And he only has about three of those around the map. At the moment, Corvus Corax is in a bit of a precarious position. Not a terrible one, but he d has lost the southeast side. Pretty solidly. Rymark has taken it. Though, Corvus Corax trying to take the center as well, trying to get back from Rymark. And to that end, I'm not sure how successful he'll be. Rymark does have a decent amount of power in his main base. He actually has a massive energy advantage. He's going to be going to Felon Ball pretty soon, and with the amount of thugs that he's had so far, the amount of thugs and convicts, Felon Ball will be a wonderful strategy. And this one, Corvus Corax does have to go home, realizing that a backdoor attack is it's now, not even imminent. A backdoor attack is occurring right now, and Rymark needs to go back. Sorry, Corvus Corax needs to go back to deal with it. Rymark is pretty well protected. Reinforcements coming in and being intercepted by Corvus's forces. That probably won't matter too much, though. Rymark, he is going to lose these forces, to, mostly to Sides and a bit to Warriors and Zeus's. However, the South attack is going to be perfectly successful, probably with no losses either. Though, that glaive is going to be hard to hit. That being said, the thugs can have no problem, the bandits coming in for support, and at that point they can probably just march into Corvus's base pretty effectively. However, a sumo is being built in the center of the map, and that is where Corvus is spending 
Not a whole lot of his money. Most of his money is being spent over in the Klogibot factory. Jumpybot, Jumpbot factory in the center of the map is producing only at 10 metal per second, which is a pretty normal rate. However, it's not going to get the Sumer out that quickly. Now, at the same time, Rymark is managing to break through the reinforcement blockade. Yeah, Corvus does have a soft contain on Rymark. So this army here is pretty much on its own. That being said, it's a very powerful army, so it should be fine even on its own. A tech orb is coming in, and these ticks, that will stop everything. Taking care of most of the thugs, leaving them dead in the water, and only one thug left. Everything gets destroyed by Zeus's and warriors just cleaning the rest of these forces up. So Rymark, unfortunately losing his entire army to a couple well-placed ticks. And the blockade holds strong in the center of the map, so Corvus, while he has lost the southeast, he has managed to keep his main base and managed to keep basically everything that he had already set up for blocking off reinforcements. So he's pretty solidly secured his base. He has lost a fair amount of economy though, and right now Ramark does have an economic advantage. A decent amount of that is because of reclaim, mostly on the commander. So he's Ramark managing to take Corvus's commander as reclaim, very valuable. That is an extremely valuable thing to take. It's a good thing he did, however, he is going to lose a lot of these forces and thus donate a lot of metal to Corvus as well. But I'm not sure how many... I mean, there's one conjurer here, there's three conjurers on the map, and I don't really see them anywhere near this reclaim field. Another conjurer will need to be pulled up pretty shortly, or built up pretty shortly to take this... Either build a character here or just take the reclaim on its own. At the same time, though, we do have a Zeus coming around the back. It won't last very long, though. It doesn't even manage to get out the geothermal plant. Couple shots away from doing that, but not quite able to do so, and the Felon has come up. That Felon Ball is up and running. A second Felon has been built as well, but the first Felon, along with a dozen thugs, going out to tear apart Corvus' forces, as the Sumo is only half done. So this Felon does not have his major weakness, that is a high health unit to drain all the shields of the ball out on the field too much. The Zeus's will work to that effect somewhat. But not as well as like, however, the Scythe is going to be able to break in and is going to kill it off. No, not quite. Deals a decent amount of damage, but not quite killing it off. And the Zeus's do go down. These convicts. Oh, did I say thugs? I meant convicts. It doesn't. Convicts are alongside it. So, repair. Lots of repair. And it's. Oh. Anyway, it is going to be very effective that way. However, the convicts do not have particularly powerful shields, so it's. A little bit tricky to set up, and now that the Zeus has been, sorry, the Sumo has been encountered, that Felon is wasting a lot of its energy on that. However, the Fel factory has been destroyed, which is good. Getting rid of the Felon, getting rid of the Zeus, the Sumo. The Felon gets rid of the Sumo, not the Zeus, what am I saying? No Zeus is on the field right now. However, there is a gunship plant being switched over in the west side of the map. And Corvus deciding to avoid the Felon ball entirely, which is the best thing to do, especially with a bunch of glaives, which the Felon just eat for lunch. Now, as you can see, just... Just grazing by already. Half a dozen glaives have been lost. A few of them just getting too close to that felon and getting killed immediately. No hope for them. However, the remainder, of which there's only about a dozen, are able to get passed into a massive gauntlet of defenses. That is not going to go over too well. Most of these glaives are not going to survive, and the survivors of that have to contend with a few bandits. So I think it's not so bad. However, the defenses are the big problem. The bandits just finishing off the last few stragglers as the glaives fail to deal any meaningful damage to Rymark's base. I think maybe damaging one bandit a bit. And one mechs. That's it. So unfortunately, Corvus's forces not able to deal a whole lot of damage. Rymark bearing down with what will likely be the end game felon ball. However, Zeus is morphing into a crab, so his one relevant Zeus here. Morphing into a crab to try to help out, try to basically buffer all of the felon energy. But even then, I don't know how much this is going to matter. The northeast, sorry, northwest is the biggest asset that Corvus has at this point. He is trying to set up an overdrive grid as well from the Moho plant all the way to this metal extractor here, which actually could very well work. Though one metal extractor is not going to be enough. You will want to spread it to the rest of them. Building a pylon would probably be the best idea, given the amount of energy he has so far. He has over 100. How much energy does he have? 210 energy. Yeah, he should just. He really should just build up that. However,. That is not going to matter. Pylon or no, Crab is in play. It is defended. It is well, being well repaired by the caretakers as well. Getting rid of the felons thanks to the t combination of Tick and just the sheer amount of power in the Crab. And getting rid of all the convicts as well. This entire attack being stopped, or at least the first wave of the attack. But another pair of felons along with several thugs and bandits coming in as well. 
Now, another well-placed stick will manage to finish this off, but none are currently in play. That being said, it doesn't matter. Rymark decides to throw in the towel, thinking he has no chance. What the heck? No GG either. He just... He just surrenders. I... Wow. Yeah, even Corvus is surprised. Apparently in the original game's chat, Corvus is rather surprised by this turn of events. And of course he'd be. Yeah, Rymark realizing now that the, there was a chance. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, and I will be back with... a... Oh, it looks like... Is it Rymark in chat? Anyway, it looks like that was a bit of an accident. Not quite what he meant to do. Okay, I kind of were mentioning that he actually disconnected. And he probably jumped back in the game, but then he surrendered afterwards. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, despite the rather bizarre ending. And I will have another game for you guys in just a moment. Another one probably with Rymark. Let's see, it is going to be... Once again, Corvus and Rymark, this time on Dual Icy Run. So stay tuned for that.